Hello everyone. If you religiously watch my channel, you probably remember the previous video that I did on facing aluminum with this Datron end mill. Well, if you read any of the comments and watched the video, you probably realized that the settings I had were not really optimal. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of revisit those settings, fix some things, and we're going to do kind of round two and see if we can get better results out of it. So let's get started. So based on your suggestions, here's a little cheat sheet that I have of the things I'm going to change and cover in this video. The first one being less stick out. In the previous video, I had the tool sticking out quite a bit from the collet. And the only reason I really did that is to clear the brushes on my dust shoe. Generally speaking, you want to have the tool as close to the collet as possible. The more stick out that you get, or the more it sticks out from that collet, the more deflection you're going to get. So I'll fix that in this video. Um, secondly, climb cutting versus conventional cuts. A climb cut basically feeds with your feed rate, so it's cutting into it and conventional is feeding against it. Generally speaking, if you have a less rigid machine, a conventional cut is going to be a worse cut. In my previous video, I was going back and forth like this, and that means that you have climb and conventional, climb and conventional, so you're kind of mixing the two cuts. You can very easily set this in Fusion or SolidWorks or whatever your cam package is to do climb only. So I will be doing climb only cuts. Um, the next one is lead in and lead out. So you have this piece of material that you're facing. The end mill can stop when it finishes cutting and then reverse, blah, blah, blah. Or you can have a lead in and lead out that goes fully off the piece and then engages it straight. I'm going to do that so that we're always taking the tool off of the piece and then going back over it again so we don't get those um, swirl marks basically where you're changing direction inside the workpiece. So I'm going to do that. Um, Johnny Woods also had a suggestion about a feed rate that he would like to see. I don't have the exact numbers on here, but we're going to be doing that exact feed rate. And then um, also Kevin, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Kevin. Um, he suggested that we do some of these same cuts over on the Tormach. I'm not going to go super in depth on the Tormach, but I'll kind of try and replicate some of the cuts so that we can see what something like the Tormach will do compared to the Avid. So let's get started with cutting some material. So here is the final setup. As you can see, there's almost no stick out. Um, it's basically almost as far as it can go into the collet. I'm a little bit concerned about the brushes on the dust shoe, but um, I guess those will just kind of get trimmed off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a climb only. So it's gonna start off of the workpiece, go this way, lift, come back, and we're gonna do that. Um, I am starting with um, Johnny's suggestions. We're gonna do 90% step over, which is about 18 millimeters, point 708, I think. We're going to do 0.015 depth of cut, so 15 thou depth of cut, 150, R 150 inch per minute, and 20,000 RPM. So let's see how that goes. So here is what that first pass ended up looking like. I do feel a little bit of a lip or, you know, it doesn't feel as flat as it could be. So I'm actually going to change the um, step over, decrease that down to 75% step over. I think I'm going to keep the depth of cut the same since that doesn't really seem to matter that much. I'm going to max out the spindle at 24,000 RPM and um, lower the feed rate just a bit. And we'll see what kind of difference we can get out of that. So here is that second cut with a little bit less of a step over. The finish is good. Um, it could be a little bit better. I think this is definitely better than the 90% step over. Um, there's still a little bit of um, 
roughness oddly in this. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, overall, I think this is better than what I was getting in my first video, um, but I'm still seeing just a little bit of roughness for some reason. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, let me make a couple changes. So here it is with some of the settings changed, and I'll tell you what I did. So I slowed it down a little bit. Um, I think I went like, eh, 60 inches per minute. I could probably go a little bit faster than that, but I just wanted to slow it down just to see what would happen. The biggest difference in this finish from the last cut was I actually took the tool out. Um, let me show you here. I actually increased the stick out. So let me get this in the frame. Yeah, so I actually pulled it down a little bit, and the reason is chips get really stuck inside um, this dust shoe, and um, when the cut ends, you see all the chips kind of fall down, and that's because they're just kept in place by suction, so there's this huge mass around the end mill, so it was just basically recutting the chips. So pulling this down a little bit gave um, the room for the chips to actually come out a little bit, and the surface finish is actually much nicer. So I'm sacrificing a little bit of deflection and stick out for a better surface finish because I'm not recutting chips. A better dust shoe would do a better job with that. So for this last and final test, I just changed one thing. I just ran this a lot slower just to see if I could get a better finish by running it really slow. Now, the reason I ran it really slow was not for um, speed or rigidity or anything like that. It was simply just to make sure the chips could get out of the way and I wasn't recutting chips because this thing just has so so many chips embedded inside of it. So I was hoping that that would help a little bit. It didn't really seem to make that much of a difference. So I think this is probably um, the last test that I have for the Avid. Um, I, I'm pretty happy with this. A little bit of sanding with a sanding block cleans this up real nice. And this is a good finish to work with if you're trying to sand or buff or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy with um, this finish. Let's move on to the Tormach and see what kind of results we can get with that. So this is the exact same cut on the Tormach, but it's not really the exact same cut. Um, the Tormach can only go up to 10,000 RPM, so I had to drop that down to 10,000 RPM, and therefore I had to change the feed rate. The feed rate is adjusted to about 45 inches per minute. That gives me about the same chip load as I was doing on the Avid when I was doing 24,000 RPM and about 100 inches per minute. So that's kind of how the adjustment went. So one side was faced with the Tormach, and one side was faced with the Avid. Can you tell which one is which? On camera, I suspect that they're probably pretty similar. There's one, there's two. Better one, or two, or about the same. So um, yeah, let's see. The one we're looking at right now is the Avid. So this is the um, finish on the Avid. So it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, another quick note about this is I did accidentally kind of slide this along the workbench when I was filming and doing stuff. So this one is a little bit scuffed up. That's not from the Avid. And then here is the Tormach. 
So Tormach and Devit. Um, they're pretty similar. Um, overall, if you were here holding this and touching it and looking at it, um, it would take you eh, maybe a couple flips just to be like, oh yeah, Tormach is better. The finish on the Tormach is a lot more uh, consistent. I don't know if you can see that just looking at it. Um, the lines and everything, it just feels and looks a lot more consistent. If we go over to the Avid, you can see that there's you know a little bit more ripples in there, things like that. It doesn't have these clean, defined lines and paths. And I think part of that is due to just the chip evacuation. The Tormach obviously has a lot better chip evacuation because it's out in the open. The Fogbuster is blowing the chips away and you just don't have that luxury with the Avid. Obviously there is the rigidity difference between the two. However, when you really look at these, they're pretty similar. Um, they're very close. They're closer than um, I think most people might think that they would be, so. There you go. So that is the Tormach, and that is the Avid. So let's unpack everything that's happened in this video, starting with the most recent, which is the comparison between the Tormach and the Avid. Ultimately, the difference in surface finish comes down to, I think, two different factors. The first is the chip evacuation. This just doesn't have as good of chip evacuation. This thing just gets you see that? This thing just gets completely clogged up with chips and it starts recutting the chips and you run into the issue. If I wanted to spend the rest of the day cleaning up my shop, I probably should have run this without the dust shoe and I would have had probably different results, although maybe not drastic. Um, the second difference between these two is ultimate rigidity. And I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. A machine that weighs as much that has a fifth of the cutting area is going to be more rigid than something like this that is massive and has all of these you know, long beams on it. Um, so rigidity and chip evacuation is the difference between these two surface finishes. And I'm not gonna act like they're almost identical. They're very different. Um, the Tormach is definitely a lot nicer. Um, the other takeaway from this video is climb versus conventional. Climb is obviously going to be the better way to cut. I knew that going into this video, I just didn't think about it in the last one. And I think the last takeaway is, actually there's two more takeaways. One takeaway is the feeds and speeds don't matter as much as I thought they did. I probably should have done more with testing the depth of cut in this video, but Honestly, the depth of cut really doesn't matter that much. This has more than enough horsepower to do a pretty sizable depth of cut, which I showed in the previous video. So I really didn't adjust that. We were just after um, finish quality in this video. So depth of cut really didn't matter that much and step over mattered a little bit less than I thought as well. Lastly, um, stick out. Stick out didn't really matter that much. Granted, you should always try and keep the um, stick out to as little as possible, but I didn't really notice that much difference. I think the biggest thing is gonna be the rigidity of the whole head and the gantry is gonna be the limiting factor, and any little bit of deflection that you're gonna get from extra stick out is gonna be pretty negligible. So let me view the comments on this video and see if there's anything else that i did wrong but i'm kind of calling this one a day i got some acceptable results i'm pretty happy with where i'm at right now i can start using this and you know eventually i might revisit this and uh, make it better i'm sure that with this router i will learn more and more the more i use it but for right now i'm pretty happy to move forward with my project so Thanks for watching. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the suggestions. Um, check me out on my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and see you in the next video.